Talk about finding treasure in your own backyard. Well, this is a story about someone who's actually done it. Jamie Hill has lived here in the tiny village of Hidden Night, North Carolina for almost his entire life. And for most of that time, he's been digging up the ground, looking for one particular thing. Running beneath the town is what is thought to be one of the most complex geological zones in the world. 63 different kinds of gemstones have been found in the immediate area. But the one that has always interested Jamie Hill is the emerald. <laughs> Jamie Hill spent years searching the countryside, driving backcountry trails, looking for the telltale signs that would lead him to the elusive emeralds. Hill has been hunting for treasure since the age of 10, when he found gold coins from the Revolutionary War. Convinced the geology of his hometown was prime territory for emeralds, he quit college to look for them and has been single-mindedly searching for the last 15 years. He believed the town was sitting on top of the type of geology which is perfect territory for emeralds, an ancient pre-Cambrian fault. Jamie Hill couldn't see it, but he knew it was there. He had to borrow to keep going and soon found himself over $100,000 in debt. Finally, he found a site and convinced his family to buy 100 acres of wooded land he was certain sat directly above the fault. His first explorations were on the surface, using just a simple screwdriver and shovel. Then, while doing one of many exploratory digs, he found a vein of mica and quartz, two minerals that when found together are a sign emeralds might be close by. The vein dipped into hard rock, where Hill uncovered a pocket a two-foot wide open space that was filled with mud, mica, and emeralds. Oh my God. Good Lord, there's a hog. <laughs> there's a hog. Jamie Hill had finally found the treasure he was looking for, an entire cache of it. When he found the emerald pocket, he was weeks away from having his equipment repossessed. His water had been cut off, and he was about to lose his house. Today, Hill has been able to expand his exploratory hole in the ground to this, a full-scale emerald mine. So we came to Hidnight to see if we could find emeralds with Jamie Hill. Now, is there, a, is there an emerald in here? Yes, this, this piece here. This is that, it right here? That's the emerald right there. Wow. That's approximately 10 carats. And when did you find this, recently? Day before yesterday. Day okay. before yesterday. Right. So we're hot on the trail to another pocket. Hot on the trail. Well, let's hope today's the day, huh? Yep. Yeah. Several days before we arrived, Hill had found one of the telltale pockets that can signal the presence of emeralds. He ordered in a special endoscopic camera to examine the inside of the pocket to see if it contained any of the clues that would indicate this is a place to dig. Pockets like this one give Hill a chance to peek underground and see if a vein looks promising. This one certainly did, and that rock-encrusted emerald was the result. So we're back today to dig deeper and find some more pockets. How much does this sucker weigh? 93,000 pounds. <laughs> the boom alone is 40,000. Incredible. As heavy and unwieldy as the backhoe is, the operator must have a light touch. The trick is to get as close to a pocket as possible with the heavy equipment without actually disturbing the very fragile emeralds. One mistake here could cost millions in lost gems. So it is with some trepidation I take over the controls. After a few minutes of instruction, it's my turn on the big cat. Slowly, by hammering and scraping the rock, we continue to open the vein until we find another telltale sign which can announce the presence of emeralds. Now you were telling me something earlier about when you when you know you start you're getting close to emeralds, you start to see like some yellow. Mm -hmm. What is that? Can you show me that? The yellow limonite, which is encasing the whole vein structure here right. with the quartz and all of these micas, right. is uh, it's a pure limonite clay, and we kind of term this a yellow brick road. When you're following this material here with the quartz oh, yeah. and the mica, that is a pure pocket clay that forms in the caverns where the emeralds grow, and it seeps up through the vein structure itself, through the quartz and the mica. And so essentially when your hands are turning this color yellow, you're on the right trail to find emeralds. Like you said, the yellow brick road to the emerald Leads city. Leads to the real emerald city. Okay. Yeah. 
And this is where you found in this pocket I've, some emeralds? I've got an emerald I want to show you here. It's 858 carats. Unbelievable. Wow, can I see it? Yes. Oh, well, it's and huge. And how many carats is this? 858. That's amazing. Emeralds are extremely rare, 19 times rarer than diamonds. This emerald, the Jolly Green Giant, was purchased for $500,000. And once a high quality emerald has been cut, its value increases dramatically. These two emeralds were cut from rough stones found right here in Jamie Hill's mine. The Carolina Princess sold for a half a million dollars. That's $64,000 per carat, the highest price ever paid for an emerald. The Carolina Queen, with an estimated value of at least one and a half million dollars, translates into over $100,000 per carat. Hill's favorite tool is a screwdriver. And while I think this is an odd choice for finding emeralds, I soon learn it is exactly what you need to nurse one out of its hiding place. Periodically through there, to, what you do is you just put your screwdriver in and just see the soft clay like that. Right. And we're just gonna pull it out, see the mica forming in it? Right, okay. It's real soft in there. Careful, That's a good sign. Don't too far. Okay. So I can go in here too, right? Mm-hmm. See, the seam's going up under here. Yeah, it is. There's a pocket here. It just doesn't look like one because it's filled with mud and clay. But that doesn't mean there aren't emeralds nearby. How's it doing back it's in there? It's going right behind this rock. OK. Yep. Dale, we're probably going to have you hit this again. Not quite there yet. We have to hit it again with the hammer. As the day wears on, I begin to understand the level of patience this work demands. A lot of starting and stopping. Explosives can't be used to break through the hard rock because it would fragment the very fragile emeralds. At this point, even using the pneumatic hammer is taking a chance. Want to go check it out? Yeah. Whew. Let's see what we got here. Where's the hand trail? Bust that wide open, didn't it? Yeah, he did. He broke it pretty good. It's good. See how soft it got down there? Yeah. Look at that. This is really oh, look at all that big mica. See that? Your heart skips a beat when you see this green mica. I know. The, the sun know. catches it. It, it, it tends to fool well, you some, but. Could that be it? Well, you have to check every piece. Yeah. We slowly and methodically work our way through the pocket. I have no idea if we're close to finding anything. Then, Jamie sees something. Ooh. That's good looking material there, see that? Yeah. Like, ooh. I see it now too. A spot of creamy green stone, emerald green. Yes, sir. So that's it right yeah, there. Yeah, that's the emerald right there. See, it's real dirty because it's coated in the clay. <laughs> it's, it's emerald. The emerald is covered with mud and dirt. I would have totally missed it. But Jamie's experienced eye picked it right out. Yeah, that's 85. it. Nice work. That's it. We've got emerald. Took a lot of hard work. We've got a cluster. It looks like that's well over 100 carats of emerald in there. And we're gonna have to be real careful. Yeah, to take I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, see that's emerald too. It's all yeah. in there, that's that's emerald. This that's, whole section. That's right? a whole section of emerald. See it growing? Yep. There's a stick that way. There's a whole stick that way. Good color too. Okay, let's get it. The trick is to get the emerald out with as little fragmentation as possible. You wanna put your hand under? Jamie works his way around it, loosening the rock and mica while trying not to disturb the emerald. You don't want to break that one. Uh -uh. It'll come up. It's already going to be in section, but the better part. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Right. We got emerald. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> good deal. There you go. That's yeah. good color. Good green. Pure, raw emerald. Today's find will cut into small stones ranging from one half to one carat in size, with a value in the area of $10,000, contributing to a running total of well over a million dollars in emeralds found here so far. So Jamie Hill has found his own field of dreams, and he literally has just touched the surface. 
relatively speaking, we're only from the surface of the ground, what, 12, 15 feet? Yeah, 12, 15 feet, yeah. 12, 15 feet. Well, in other parts of the world, they have to go under whole mountain ranges, thousands of feet deep, you see, to, to get emerald. Right. We're only 15 feet deep and we're getting them. You just we getting just, started. Exactly. And today we pulled out approximately 100 carats of emerald, some of which is good and cuttable, yeah. and some it's not. Right. But it's still emerald and it's good color and we're only 15 feet deep. So we're just beginning here. All right. And I got my life's work cut out right here. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. You need another backhoe driver, let me know. Okay. All right. <laughs> Have fun. Thanks.